Look who's here, BlackRock's Larry Fink, live in studio. We're talking market bubbles. Where does he see them? How he's guiding his team to invest around them? We will talk infrastructure investing in the wake of that Baltimore Bridge disaster and tragedy, and probably one of the most important and urgent issues for our audience, smarter ways to save for retirement but how to start right now. All right, first, let's get to the markets really quickly. We do have green on the screen here for all four majors. We've got the Dow point gain looking pretty healthy, 295 points to the upside. So the Russell is the biggest percentage gainer. It's up about 1.5%. NASDAQ, it's, it's wiggling a bit. It's up seven points. The recent rock star, NVIDIA, though, maybe that's the problem. It's all the way at the bottom of the NASDAQ 100. S&P, as you see right there, up about 18 points. Speaking of which, we are coming up on the end of the month and the end of yet another winning quarter. The broader index is on pace for its fifth winning month. And flip it over quarter to date, the S&P has put in an absolutely gorgeous gain of 9.5%. Now, if you stretch that out over the past year, the 31% run-up either looks fabulous or worrisome. What does the world's largest asset manager think right now? With $10 trillion in assets under management, BlackRock chairman and CEO Larry Fink is here, and we're also joined by Charlie Gasparino. Charlie. All Charlie. right. Now, before we get into some macro stuff and that amazing letter that you put out, Thank which I, I really enjoyed, and infrastructure actually plays in that letter, so yes. we should talk about that right. a little bit. Um, I noticed that Donald Trump once said, my money manager, Larry Fink, made me a lot of money. Yes. Did very good. He was in, you were in the White House with him. He had a lot of good things to say about you because he had his money with BlackRock. If you were his real money manager now, he's sitting on paper worth $5 billion dollars you know he's cash poor. What would you tell him to do? This is DJT, the new stock, as you know. <laughs> know. Everybody's talking about it. You know, uh, the stock has had an amazing run. Um, and uh, I think in a SPAC, you know, the Trump organization needs to hold their shares for either one or two years. No, the board can tell him to sell now. They can give, and by the way, the board is not <clears> exactly <throat> the BlackRock board. It's his son <laughs> and his buddies, you know. But I... But I believe there's some covenants when they go public. Oh. I, I don't know it. But most SPACs have covenants. Well, if there wasn't a covenant, would you tell them to sell right now? You know, I don't know enough about the company. I, you know, so I, I'm not going to... I would recommend him not asking me that question. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, so you would give him no advice? I, I, look, at it, it looks high to me on, uh, on every metrics. It looks like it's a very high stock price. But look at it. it has, there's a lot of momentum going on there. Um, Time will tell, but I, it, by every metrics, it's very, you know, it doesn't make any money. By every metrics, it's a very expensive stock. You don't expect a call from him, right? Uh, I, I, I would take his call, and I would give him <laughs> advice if he asked. But okay. it would, that advice would be private, Charlie. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Larry, forget about some of the IPOs lately, DJT right. and Reddit and how yeah. they've spiked. The S&P, we just showed it. To some, it looks very much like a bubble, and it has the characteristics of a bubble, not just the S&P, but this entire market. It's getting frothy. It's got what many would say is a compelling story. That would be AI. What kind of meetings are you having at BlackRock about how to invest around what could be a bubble bursting? Well, first of all, I don't think it's a bubble. I think um, we're seeing more validation uh, at, with stock prices. We, we're seeing earnings momentum in a lot of companies. Even today, you cited the Russell. So the Russell 5000 is, when that goes up at more, that's start, starting to tell you there's more breath in the marketplace. Um, historically, we looked at some, so much of the gains in seven stocks, but the, actually the breadth of the market is expanding. To me, that gives me a good sign. When I talk to CEOs and businesses, um, probably 80% of the companies that I'm talking to are, are seeing upward momentum. The in, United, earn, in earnings and stuff like that. Earnings, revenue, growth, margins, productivity is up. Let's be clear, productivity fell during COVID when people were working yeah. from home. People are back in the office. Productivity is increasing. Productivity is a good sign for expanding margins. And so, I, look, at we read the newspapers. We listen to television. It's full of negativity. Right. And at the same time, we're having record stock listen, levels. Listen, I love when it goes up, too. But when all assets are going up, and I'm talking gold is at an all-time high or relatively close to it, Bitcoin, which, of course, you know about because of your iBit ETF. Yes. Uh, all of these assets are just spiking no matter what the news is. I think there's strong reason for the United States to have more momentum than any place in the world right now. The innovation in technology, 
the innovation in, in, in energy stocks in terms of oil discovery and, distract, and extraction. Mm -hmm. So there are many reasons why we're seeing you know, greater productivity and the, it, there's really great opportunities. But you know, my letter talked about retirement. Okay, right. retirement is not something about whether the market's up or down in any one quarter. Yeah. Okay, we we Long can't term. we can't be confused about you know one stock or a market over a quarter. This is a long horizon, and I said this is a crisis in the world today, and it's a crisis because we, we we're spending so much time today talking about the miracles of medicine. There's not a day that you don't read or hear about the new wonders of some of these weight loss drugs and what, what they do in terms of eliminating you know, much of the kidney disease and liver disease and heart disease and joint diseases. So you like Ozempic, huh? <laughs> You're not on it. You, you lost a few not, pounds. I'm not on it, no, Charlie, but, um, <laughs> but I know many people who are. Headline, Larry Fink, <laughs> I'm not, not I'm not on Ozempic. <laughs> but let, let's be clear, it is extending life. Yeah. And something that, that I'm also aware of, some of the new therapies for dementia, how it's extending the period of time when it really gets advanced. We have, we have friends that, yes, that are living but we're, longer. So we're, we're spending, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna be living longer. Larry, what I love about you is you do take that long-term view. Always. You always have, always. and your, your letters are must-reads because of that. But we do live in a short-term we do, and more than ever. More than ever. Okay, so but that's the, you, the dilemma. How do you transcend well, let's, today into something? Okay, long -term? we'll do that in a minute. But okay, I, now great. that we're in today, yep. I want to talk about you now. You and Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan, the CEO, you know the two biggest guys on Wall Street. Big, you know, run the biggest firms, but you're kind of the yin and yang of, <laughs> of predicting the future here. Jamie is very negative. I mean, he thinks the Fed. Well, not very, but he's significantly pes very, but pe pessimistic. He okay. would say Fed rate hikes are coming more. It's gonna something's gonna happen with the economy because of that. You, you the one. I mean, listen, you nailed the Fed rate, rate hike stuff. I, yeah. Since and I think you're gonna nail it going forward at least two more and two, one in probably, June. Probably two more. Why don't you see that having any d deleterious impact on the economy and the markets? Because most of the viewers who own homes. They own homes with a 30 year mortgage. Mm -hmm. They are not impacted by higher rates. And so we, the transmission of high rates in America are much more elongated because the average homeowner is not impacted. In most places in the world, home ownership is, uh, is a adjustable mortgage of some sort and it resets all the time. So we have the entire mortgage industry that's having a that has a 30 year so mortgage. It, it sort of cocoons, you're saying, the, the consumer to some extent. It, it brings down the volatility dramatically and it really gives us that. Two, um, um, we, we have corporations that have done a very good job in extending the maturities. If you look at the credit markets today, you do not see companies being stretched too right. far. Now, in the, some of the private credit areas, you're seeing are. more and more small companies. And I think this is the tale of two, two parts of the economy. The, the big, large cap companies that, that are part of the S&P are, are doing quite so well So they manage their balance sheets well. Um, Absolutely. So the Fed, want to nail you down. Yep. Prediction on the Fed. I, I think, as I said now for over two years, inflation is going to be stickier. I still believe inflation is going to be stickier, but I do believe the Federal Reserve will have room to test the economy, to test the markets, to, to one, one, well, depending on what happens between now and June, but if everything materializes as we think it will be, they will do an easing in June and maybe one more easing between okay, now and year end. Okay, you just said maybe. All right, now. But it's always maybe. I know, I understand <laughs> that, but. We felt, at least as we look at all of the data, which is still coming in strong for the U.S. economy and the market Absolutely. is doing well, yep. that there may be just one. And Raphael Bostic of the Atlanta I Fed heard, just yeah. came out and said one, one rate cut this year. Maybe. I'm not uncomfortable with that prognostication. I, you know, earlier this year, and I think when the last time I was on the show, there were many people talking about her sixth Six. rate cut. And I said, I think on the show it would be you know, two then, and I'm still saying two. But if I had to be, have a bias, I would say one over three. Right, you know. right. I what think assets right. have surprised you? 
I'm sorry? What assets in the last, let's say, six months and their moves have surprised you? I mean, an obvious one might be the AI-related stocks, big tech, but what else? Actually, in some of those AI stocks, their earnings are actually um, validating. Like, NVIDIA's earnings are validating some of its stock price. Now, it's trading at a 30 PE, <laughs> but, and, and, and arguably it was growing faster than that. So let's see how that continues on. Look, I'm, I, I'm very bullish. Um, on the long-term viability of Bitcoin. I was going to say, did that surprise that you? That surprised me how much that's really? gone up. I mean, look, at it, it, it is, we, we're creating now a market that has more liquidity, more transparency, and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised, and I would never have predicted it before we filed it, that we were going to see this type of retail demand. So you thought you'd do good, yeah. but not this good? I thought... Yes. yes. Well, IBIT, <laughs> is, IBIT is your ETF yes. over at iShares. Yes. It's about to overtake Grayscale, which was in the business uh, certainly a lot longer. You look at the gains since January 11th when it first came about. Yes. Have you ever seen this much inflow this quickly into IBIT share? is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. Nothing has, has gained assets as fast as I bit in the history of ETF. So Ether is next with a, an ETF? We'll see. Uh, that's, no, that's under registration. Okay, so, so let's just not talk about your product. Right. Talk about Ether. The SEC, there's lots of noise about them declaring Ether a security, which would take it out of the Bitcoin category as a commodity. How does that translate into an ETF? I, I don't think that, look, I really can't talk about it, but I don't think that designation is going to be that deterious to. Oh, really? So yeah. you, even if it's a security, you can start an ETF, a, a bit, an ETH ETF? I think so, yeah. Well, that's wild. So we got a financial locomotive heading toward a cliff, and that is well, retirement. So you're going oh, to talk cliff. more about yes. that in just a minute. <laughs> uh, as Larry said, he not on Ozempic, but many Americans are, and that is already proving to extend their lives. Yes. But are retirement funds keeping up with longer lifespans? Larry Fink says not even close. He is sounding the loudest alarms to date, but he's pairing the urgency with a fix for Americans, from boomers to millennials, Gen X, Y, and Zers. Larry's retirement solutions right after the break.